Hey guys, Kyle here from the Shots Fired Podcast channel and Prior Canine Handler. Today, I'm gonna share with you guys the most essential tools that I think you need to have in your canine bag while out on patrol as a canine handler. Don't fast forward through this video because you don't wanna miss out on everything that I have to go over. Hey, we're out of shot fired. Copy additional shot fired. Shot fired, shot fired. Shooting at us, shooting at officer. All right, guys, let's jump into the bag and see what I carried with me. First, let's start out with a leash. Super important. I always made sure that I had a leash with me at all times. I personally carried a six foot lead on me. I had it folded up just like so, and I had it in my cargo pocket. It was easy for me to grab, but I always made sure I had it. I generally had my dog on a leash at all times until it was time to deploy the dog. Speaking of leashes, long lines, super important. Whether you have a 15, a 30, or a 50 foot long line, doesn't matter. You wanna make sure that you have some type of long line in your car ready to go at all times. I have this thing folded up here just like so, so that if I needed to deploy it, pull it out, unravel it, and I'm good to go. Don't have your stuff wadded up in your car so that when it is time to use this, you gotta unfold it, get it all untangled. That's not the proper way to do it. It's gotta be ready to go. Make sure you have multiple long lines in your car in the event that you need to hook more than one of them together to give you even more distance between you and the dog. Okay, next up is an e-collar. I had an e-collar on my dog all the time, whether I was at training or deployed out in the field on patrol, I always had an e-collar on me. It's an extension of the leash. I made sure that I was properly trained how to use this. And you guys, I would honestly say, if you're not trained on how to properly use an e-collar, I wouldn't use one for various reasons. You can injure your dog, you can ruin your dog. There's all sorts of reasons why you should not use one if you're not properly trained how to use it. So. Make sure that you guys have a good e-collar. I carried a Tritronics Pro 550 and I found it worked great. The compulsion level on it was always consistent, that the remote that it came with was easily accessible. I put it on my belt, my non-dominant hand, so that I had access to it at all times while my dog was deployed. Super important piece of equipment. And just remember, this thing is to be utilized as just an extension of the leash. Okay, a tug toy. I always had a tug toy on me. I had this thing shoved in my cargo pocket. It gave me the ability to reward my dog if I wanted to, or if I was out on the field and I was on a prolonged event, whether it was a SWAT call out or even on patrol. If I knew that my dog was gonna be out of the car for a long period of time, he would start to get whiny sometimes and I would be able to feed him a toy and kind of give him something to do. On SWAT calls, I had another particular toy that did not have any cotton in it and it was made of leather. And I would be able to feed my dog that and he can gnaw on that thing for a long period of time. He wouldn't destroy it, cotton wouldn't be everywhere, but it kept him quiet, and it was just a great, great piece of tool to have. So I always made sure that I carried a tug on me all the time. Traffic lead. Guys, this is very small, but it's very useful. There were times when I would deploy this out. Again, I had it folded up just like so. I carried it in my cargo pocket. If I ever needed to throw this on my dog, I had it available to me. It's cheap, it's small. I'd rather have it than not, and there's always a time and a place that you could use a little small traffic lead like this. Okay, let's talk about gloves. I always made sure that I had a pair of gloves on me all the time, again, in my cargo pocket. These things came in handy for me all the time. If I was doing a long line search, whatever the case was, I didn't wanna get rope burn, I would throw these on. I wanna preface this by saying, make sure you get a good set of gloves. Don't get something too thick that you can't manipulate your weapon, you can't manipulate your other tools with. I just used a pair of uh, mechanics gloves. They're thin enough, they have the protection for my palms. I always made sure that I cut my pointer and my middle finger off so that I could fit it easily in the trigger well and I can manipulate my gun I can, and I can feel things with it. Okay, let's talk about vests. I carried a vest with me. I did not have a vest on my dog all the time during deployments. I would only throw my vest on him during long line deployments. And the reason for that was for me, I didn't wanna have uh, this extra material on my dog that would give a bad guy or, or a suspect extra things to grab onto if my dog were to get an apprehension or a, you know just more things to get caught up on. I only deployed this during certain searches when I would be using a long line. And my dog knew that when the vest went on, that's the kind of search that we were doing. If you choose to use one all the time, that's fine. Just make sure that your vest fits properly on your dog. When you go to purchase one, fit your dog for it, make sure that it fits nice. You don't want it too tight and constricting your dog, and you also don't want it too loose and it's slopping around everywhere. Make sure it fits good. Okay, 
let's talk about muzzles. I had the muzzle with me at all times in my duty bag. If I was doing PR events or anything like that and I wanted to muzzle my dog just to mitigate any liability of potentially my dog biting somebody, I would throw it on them. But often I would use it for training. I think it's a great training tool. Now, don't expect your dog to put this on for the first time if you've never trained them for it. If you guys wanna train your dogs to get used to a muzzle, throw some kibble in here, hot dogs, feed your dog out of it, you know, baby steps, you know, then work up to, you know, maybe putting it on your dog, letting your dog chill out, don't do anything with them, let them just wear it for a little bit, take it off, reward the dog, and then, you know, eventually your dog's gonna build up tolerance to it, and then you can throw this thing on and it won't even care. If nothing else, and you guys don't have hard, good quality muzzles, make sure that you guys at least have a soft muzzle. Uh, that way, if your dog gets injured, and you need to attend to it, you can throw a soft muzzle on your dog so that you or your partner don't get bit. The last thing you wanna do is your dog gets hurt and you're trying to provide medical aid to it and it's trying to bite everybody. So at least carry a soft muzzle on you. Okay, bolt cutters. These come in super, super handy. I had these in my bag, ready to go, always. I don't expect you to carry this on you out in the field because it's obviously bulky and heavy, but in the event that you came across a lock gate, something with a padlock on it, uh, my patrol partners knew exactly where my bolt cutters were and if I asked them to go retrieve it, they could go retrieve it for them easily, bring it to me and we could be on our way. But if you don't have a pair and you came across you know, a fence that had a lock on it or, or a chain link fence, you know, then you're having to figure out ways to either get over it, um, go around it. But with a nice pair of bolt cutters, you can go right through it. Uh, oftentimes your evidence CSI folks will give these to you for free. That's where I got mine. Okay, vest. This is a ballistic vest for the dog. This is an older model and it's got extra features on it. It's got extra little buckles and, and things that are customized for this vest because I did some hard, uh, repelling with the dog. Um, but I only use this personally in a SWAT capacity or if I knew that my, uh, I was gonna be deploying my dog in a situation where somebody was armed, I would throw this on the dog. They make these that are a lot thinner now. They're a lot less heavy. They don't heat your dog up as fast. Um, you know, there's a time and a place to, to have a ballistic vest on your dog. Uh, personally, I didn't run it all the time. Um, that was due to the fact that this thing is so bulky and heavy. But nowadays, I think you're pretty solid if, if, um, if you get your hands on a, on a newer model one. And there's a lot of companies out there that will provide these to you guys and your whole canine unit for free. So um, you just gotta do a little bit of research on them. Couple items that I would suggest having in your cars that I don't have out here with me. Uh, one of them is gonna be a collapsible ladder or an accordion style ladder. They fold up nicely, they can fit in your car. Came in handy a ton of times for me. I mean, whether or not you wanted to use it to get your dog in, into a you know particular space or just an officer or yourself to be able to use to get up to an elevated surface, having some type of ladder available to you uh, it could come in handy and I used it all the time. The next thing that I would suggest having is a pole cam and you know, pole cams can be very expensive. I, I'm, I'm not saying you have to get the most expensive one, but there are a lot of affordable pole cams out there. You, you know, you might need it to throw up into an attic in a crawl space. You know, if you're going to be deploying your dog into a certain situation and you want to see, you know, where you're going to be putting your dog to mitigate safety, or maybe you're going to poke your head up, up into a, I don't know, an attic or something, you know, that's dangerous. So being able to throw a pole cam up there, see what's up there, um, you know, just kind of mitigates the risk a little bit of you getting injured or your dog getting injured. Now, if you can't afford a pole cam or you don't have one, something that's very easy to do is take your phone, maybe tape it to a broomstick or some type of pole, and you can either put it on video mode or FaceTime somebody, on, you know, a partner or whatever, throw that up there and kind of scan 360 um, in that particular space, you know, bring it back down, and watch your phone and see what was recorded on there. But I think that's better than nothing. And then lastly, I would say that you guys make sure you have a good quality medical bag in your car for your canine. Okay, if your dog gets hurt at work, you want to have the ability to give it proper aid. Um, just like we carry medical bags for us. I always made sure that I had a good quality medical bag with me and it was easily accessible. There's a lot of classes out there that you guys can take that teach you basic canine medical aid. Uh, in the event that you needed to treat your dog, I would suggest taking one of those classes. And usually at the end of those classes, they provide you a medical bag. So other than this stuff, you guys, uh, obviously I carried several other pieces of equipment with me. You know, make sure you always got water and, and things like that for your dog, um, especially in the summertime when it's hot, they do get, they do overheat very easily and you wanna, you wanna take care of your dog. So, all right guys, so this is everything that I carried in my canine bag on patrol all the time. 
There's a lot of other things out there that you can carry and that's fine. I had other pieces of equipment as well, but I feel like these are the most essential pieces of equipment that you need to have to be a successful canine handler. If you guys aren't subscribed to the channel, make sure you do so so you don't miss out on any future videos that we have coming up. If you like this content, make sure you give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend, it really helps us out. Stay safe out there guys, we'll catch you guys on the next video.